Of all the tractor brands in the USA, only seven are sold by the company that makes them. We're going to list those companies in this episode and hopefully provide a little bit more information about each one. Let's get started. First, I should define some terms. The main thing is, what does it mean to make your own tractor? And I'm kind of defining this as doing the actual engineering design of the tractor. Now, that's not just the high level of, uh, I want this seat on it, and I want these tires on it, and I, no, I'm talking about the actual engineering, um, getting the parts together, making sure that they fit together physically, work together, and just going through all of that design and engineering cost, I might say. So that's what I mean by make your own tractor. So let's get started with the big orange. Yeah, Kubota should be first on this list because they're the ones that really brought the compact tractor concept to the USA. It's kind of an interesting history, really. Kubota was making compact tractors in Japan for who knows how many years before they ever come to the USA. And they were a huge hit for agricultural purposes there in Japan and in other Asian countries as well. Here in the USA, they didn't really view that size tractor as something that would be useful, right? Agriculture had moved on to much larger tractors. We had seen small tractors like that, the Farmall Cub, the, the Alice Chalmers B. Um, Farmall and, and Alice Chalmers both had several models that were, you know, that were meant for small agriculture, but they were the only tractors or the biggest tractors of the day. And as agricultural needs and farm sizes grew in the USA, so did the tractor sizes. Well, that kind of neglected the small farmer, or as we call them today, the rural lifestyle individual like us. Kubota came in and filled that need. They started in 1969, they brought a tractor in from Japan and it revolutionized the concept of what tractors would be used for here in the USA. I can remember in the mid 70s, my dad seeing these little Kubota tractors and he thought he could really use one. Yeah, he's a large farmer and he had plenty of big tractors, but he always thought that he could use a small tractor for gardening, for mowing his yard, just thought that would be perfect for his uses around the house. He never brought himself to buy one of the Kubotas because, well, quite frankly, he couldn't afford it at the time. But he always wanted one, right? I mean, he, he, he could see the value, and that value was recognized by many people, so much so that Kubota started a phenomenon with these small tractors. Now, fast forward all these years, and Kubota is a huge influence on the compact tractor space. Some say the biggest. I'm actually not sure. I don't have good numbers on this. I know it's pretty close between them and the next one we'll talk about. But they've began to move some of the assembly, all of the assembly of the BX tractors, I believe, is done in the USA. I found an investor presentation that shows that they're producing BXs in Japan as well. And I don't know if that means they're, some of the ones are going to be shipped to the USA from Japan or how that works. But what I noticed was is that they're moving some other machines. Uh, they're going to focus on compact track loaders next, uh, moving them to USA production. So Kubota is investing more and more and more in the U.S. market. And from the financial numbers I saw, uh, they're perhaps even more involved in the USA now than they are in Japan and some of the other nations that they serve. Now, when we look at Kubota, we see a very strong dealer network. A, a lot of dealers, I believe I saw 1,100 dealers in the U.S. It's hard to, hard to say specifically on this. Some of the website information on all these manufacturers is inconsistent or maybe not even totally clear uh, which is which, but it looked like 1,100 dealers uh, representing the agricultural segment. In any case, you can be confident that if you buy a Kubota, you'll find dealer support and manufacturer support. I don't think there's any question on that moving forward. And so I think that's one of the reasons that you will see a premium price on this brand. Next on our list is John Deere. Yeah, we put together a whole episode on where John Deere tractors are made. I should point out right here that we made a mistake in that episode. 
We ended that episode by saying that the 3D series, the 3025D, 3035D, 3043D, were Yanmar-based designs. Apparently that is not correct. Those tractors are designed in India by John Deere engineers, um, and they're assembled and built in, in, in Pune, India as well. So I was incorrect on that. I apologize. I try to get accurate information to all of you, and sometimes I fail. I, I had two different sources relay me the Yanmar information, and then John Deere Corporate came to me definitively and told me that was incorrect. So I want to make sure I get that correction out. You've heard it here right now. I don't want to spend too much time on John Deere here because I focused on them in that prior episode last week. Gave a lot of the history. I talked about when they got into the compact tractor business there. Just as a reference, they got in by partnering with Yanmar in 1978. So they were essentially responding to Kubota's earlier entry and, and reacting to it in a sense. And it took them several years, well, we might say 35 years, to transition to building all of their own machines and not relying on the Yanmar design. I haven't been able to find out uh, a number of dealers in the U.S. Um, I've asked and just haven't got a response yet. If I have that information, I'll put it right here. And if I don't have it in time for publication of the video, we will put it in the description. Like Kubota, John Deere has invested an enormous amount in design, development, and support of not only their dealers, but of their tractors themselves. So I think you're gonna have uh, good support moving forward with parts, service, a, a good knowledge base on either of these major brands. I'd have no hesitation whatsoever with regards to long-term support. Again, that is one of the major reasons why you'll see the prices a little higher on these two brands. The next three I wanna talk about are all South Korean companies. I'm not sure why these little tractors have done so well in South Korea, but these next three brands have brought the strength of their own tractors to the USA, and that, that has, uh, has really impacted their future as well as our market overall here in the US. I'll start with Daedong. Now, you may not recognize that name, but you would recognize Coyote. Coyote's the brand name that Daedong has used on all of their equipment marketed here in the USA, and actually, I believe, marketed everywhere except for South Korea. Now, from what I read, Coyote introduced their first tractor into the USA around 1986, but they really established their USA presence in 1993. That's when they got serious about it and came up with Coyote USA, and they built or rented a facility at that point, I don't know. The final facility that they're in now in Wendell, North Carolina, came along in 2004. Coyote still builds all of their tractors in South Korea and ships them here only for a final assembly step. It's an assembly that's done by the dealers or can be done there at Wendell, but it's, it's not a, an in-depth assembly by any means. The hallmark of Coyote, in my personal opinion, is that they adore, or maybe they're even obsessed with, Kubota. Coyote designs seem to mimic Kubota as closely as possible. Their models match up almost identically. Uh, even small design details, you will see that, that they look a lot like a Kubota. So if you're interested in a Kubota tractor, you like that design, you like that approach, uh, but the price is too much for you, or you know for whatever reason you, you feel like you need a lower price tractor, you, Coyote's probably the first one I would look to in, in that situation. Contrary is not true. If you're at a John Deere and you're thinking the same thing, Coyote might not be my next choice because it's a totally different machine. It's more like a Kubota. A lot of people think that Coyote and Kubota maybe were the same company at one time. While the two did work together on one line of tractors, the L02 series, that would be the L1802, 2002, 22, all the way up to 2802. That's the extent of their working together. In fact, the relationship has soured since then, including some legal action between the two of them. Kubota has sued about the orange color and I think some other 
some other bad things, right? So I don't really know the details on that, but I know that, uh, that it's not a happy relationship between them. I kind of chuckle from the outside to watch them uh, bicker and, and battle, but I'm sure it's no fun on the inside uh, to deal with that. In any case, that's been the coyote approach. And they have a lot of features for the money. Their support, their dealer network has taken a long time to establish. I personally don't think it's up to where a, a Kubota or a deer is, but it's getting better. It's fascinating to see these companies mature over time. Next up, another South Korean company, TYM. Now I'm fascinated by TYM because as late as 2018 or 2019, we were at a trade show where the TYM outdoor booth was empty all day long. There seemed to be no interest whatsoever. Since that time though, the interest in this brand has skyrocketed. They've done an incredible job marketing. The biggest thing I think they've done is they've reached out to a lot of YouTube influencers and have put tractors in their hands for evaluation and use and demonstration. And I think it's a testament to what social media can do to elevate a brand and just, yeah, just get the word out. And so you, you know those channels and go check them out if you haven't seen them. A lot of channels now have uh, TYM equipment on their property. Now, TYM has invested an enormous amount, as I said. They've bought KUKJ, uh, another South Korean manufacturer of tractors. And additionally, we've seen a lot of new model introductions. We've seen that earlier, they focused almost entirely on rebranding. And more recently, they've been pushing their own brand more and more and more. So we're seeing that uh, come to fruition. I think this uh, idea of, of bringing their own brand to market and heavily marketing it is working for them. So TYM, I believe, is going to be a force uh, moving forward, a, a, a real competitor. When they're able to get their dealer channel uh, built out and established, they've had some good dealers between their Branson dealers, their TYM dealers, and it, it'll be interesting in the future just to watch where they're going and how they, how they get there. It's, it's been impressive growth, at least from the marketing view. I don't know if the sales have followed, but I suspect they have. The last South Korean manufacturer that I want to mention here that actually markets tractors under their own name is LS. Now LS came from LG, that's right, the TV, washing machine, dryer maker, um, and they split off many years ago because, yeah, that's just such a, a conglomeration to try to support that many different products. So LS was split off from that. Like many of these companies, they've gone through a variety of different uh, incantations to end up where they are today. LS is big in the USA, but I really don't have a handle on the portion of their tractors that they sell under the LS name as compared to those that they sell rebranded through New Holland or Case IH. Same company, by the way, Case New Holland is the name of the company, and so both of those brands are, are together. One thing I did find is that Case New Holland recently signed a contract with LS for $387 million over the next three years for LS to provide tractors to Case New Holland. I did a little calculation on this, trying to figure out, well, how many tractors would that be? And I, I'm just taking a wild guess at the average cost of those tractors when Case is buying them wholesale is, I don't know, let's say $20,000. $20,000, $387 million, you do a little division there, and you come up with somewhere around 19,000 tractors over the next three years. So $6,000 a year, that actually sounds kind of reasonable to me as to, as to what Case IH would do. And so I don't know how many more tractors LS is selling on their own. I'm also not seeing quite as much marketing effort from them. They are still going to the trade shows. We see a, a big booth at uh, the farm shows, but we're not seeing the same kind of social media exposure and, and marketing effort. They tried it for a little while, but they seem to have, have moved on from that. And so, you know, we're, we're seeing similar behavior to TYM in a sense, but different at the same time. So that kind of rounds out the three South Korean brands, right? 
Coyote, Daydong, TYM, and LS. So before we get to the last two, I want to show you my favorite grease gun technology. This is the lube shuttle, right? It's totally different than any other greasing technology. It uses different tubes, okay? This tube is threaded right onto the gun. There's no plunger that goes all the way through. You don't have that mess that you do. You'll never have the leaking out the back end. It does have a follower right there in the end. Uh, that as you pump the grease out, it pulls that grease right up there and it's, you know, it's totally clean on the inside of the tube. The steel piece here on the outside is only to protect the tube. It, it has no functional value for the actual grease gun. This is offered with a pistol grip, a regular long handle grip, or an electric model. Now I use the lock and lube which is from a different company, but I use the lock and lube on my lube shuttle. I really like that, and I think you will too. lube-shuttle.us slash store. Use coupon code TTWT and get 5% off. You will like this. Now, I use the LI400 grease. It's my favorite, but the MOS2 is good. I've used it a lot as well, so... Those are my two favorite choices if, if you're looking for advice on which grease to use. Check it out. This will change your attitude on greasing equipment. We've got two left that I know of. Any guesses? Well, the next one on the list is Yanmar. Yanmar is interesting to me. Uh, they've got an incredible tractor they have had for years and years and years. Obviously, Deere thought it was a, a great tractor back in the late 70s, right? That tractor has continued to be enhanced over the years, and it's, it's a, a, a quality machine, a, a fairly high-end machine from not only features but reliability. Uh, so that makes Yanmar's situation kind of odd to me. We don't have any Yanmar dealers in the state of Indiana. If you look on the dealer locator, it shows one dealer. And if you go back in our videos, maybe four years, maybe five years, we actually went to that dealer and, and well, let's just put it this way. We know why they're no longer a Yanmar dealer. I don't understand why there hasn't been more uptake of the Yanmar tractors. Uh, they early on had some social media presence with Wrangler Star, for example. I think he may still have the tractor. But uh, we just don't see the marketing effort. We don't see the dealer support. They were not at the trade shows this year um, that we go to. So I, I don't really understand. Uh, it, it seems like the tractor is better than the corresponding investment in their dealer chain or their... Um, just overall their support. So it's, it's kind of, uh, like I say, it's kind of strange there. Now let me make it clear, they do not make the John Deere tractors. We called a Yanmar dealer just today, and the first thing he said was, well, this is the same tractor as the John Deere. So some of this misinformation may be because they don't know any better, but unfortunately I'm afraid some of it is intentional. Uh, Yanmar does not make the John Deere tractors, we have a whole episode on that. Why does that frustrate me? I just don't like misinformation. Uh, I, I just want the truth to be out there. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. I think Yanmar is an incredible tractor, but it's not the same as the John Deere. The, the transaxles are totally different. Yes, they do share an engine, uh, but it's, it's a dramatically different tractor. Yanmar, for example, has a transmission in some of their models that might be a really nice machine. I'd, I'd like to, to get to spend some time with it. It's kind of a variable speed gear drive of some sort. I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand. Maybe if you know more about that transmission, yep, leave some messages in the comments. We'd love to, to hear a little more about that. But my summary is the Yanmar market position doesn't correspond to the Yanmar tractor. And then we've got this latest press release that we mentioned in our TYM video about them sourcing tractors from TYM now. With the quality of machine that Yanmar would have, why would they need to be sourcing any tractors? Just a, a lot more questions for me than answers at this point. Number seven is an Indian manufacturer, Solus. Yeah, the name of the company is ITL, and it's actually 30% owned by Yanmar. 
Okay, Yanmar and Solus, by the way, were working together just a couple of years ago. They all the Yanmar tractors and the Solus tractors were all sold under the Yanmar dealer umbrella. I'm not sure if that's still happening. I'm not sure if this TYM arrangement we're talking about is replacing that, or if that's if we're just going to keep that. I'm, I I really don't quite understand that. But anyway, Solus or ITL is a major manufacturer in India. I don't think they're the largest there, but they are a a big manufacturer there. The Solus tractors are relatively entry level. Uh, I'm not sure whether they're going to try to go to market on their own, whether they're going to continue to be marketed with Yanmar. Uh, I really don't quite understand uh, their approach to get to market, but I felt like I must include them because that is a direct brand name from the manufacturer ITL. Now I do have one that I want to add to what I'll call an honorable mention list, and that is Massey Ferguson. No, they don't make their own tractors, but they've been in partnership with Iseki now for a long time. So the manufacturer is Iseki, and Iseki does not attempt to market here in the USA other than through Agco Massey Ferguson. So given that that partnership has been around for a long time, I feel like they sort of fit this list, right? I, I, I don't see that as a partnership that's going away anytime soon, but technically, yeah, it's not a manufacturer that makes their own machines, so I don't believe I can count them in the seven. If you know of any other tractor brands in the USA that are sold by the company who designs and builds them, then let us know in the comments section below. If we need to update anything here, as in the other videos we've done in this series, we will put it in a pinned comment and we'll also put it in the description. I do my best to get this information accurate, and complete, but sometimes, yeah, I fail, like the rest of us, I suppose. So I wanna make sure we get this right. I wanna make sure that this is helpful to you. You guys make your own decisions on what tractors you wanna buy. I'm just trying to provide information to help you in that decision. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything.